Um, but let's go ahead and get to the first game here, and let's try to stack up these wins here, guys. Uh, let's go over here to the streets of Portland, where we have the Portland Trailblazers here laying two and a half points at home. You got the Nets getting back two and a half here. Uh, if you'd like to take the Nets uh, outright, you can get back plus 120 on the money line. Blazers land minus 140. We have an over and under sitting at 222 in this one, Ski. Um, obviously, the Nets come up giving up 153 points, my guy. They have to come back with some type of defensive effort in this game, right? Um, you liking the total in this game? Yeah, this game, I, I do like the total. For one, last five games, both teams are bottom 10 in pace. At Portland playing actually the slowest basketball. And then I look at the defensive rating for both of these teams, uh, very close to top 10. Portland is number 10, Brooklyn number 11. And like you said, they gave up a lot in that last game. Uh, before, when Kyrie Irving uh, was off of the team, they were playing a lot of defense. That's why they were getting wins. So if they want to go back to getting wins, that's how it's going to start. I look at the totals the last two weeks. Um, for Brooklyn, they're averaging about 213 points. And then for the Portland side, they're averaging about a little bit over 210 points per game. So that gives us some wiggle room under this 222 and a half that we're looking at for today. And um, that's the that's my best bet for this game. I think if I pick a side, it's tough because I want to back Brooklyn early. Um, and I'm curious to hear what you fellas think. But either, you know, the way KD is talking about the team and – in a way, just throwing them under the bus, it can go one of two ways. It's either going to be everybody stepping up and showing them, hey, you know, we NBA players too, or everybody's quitting. So I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, how it's going to turn out tonight and what you guys think. Yeah, that's a good point there. See, obviously a lot of things going on with the Nets, a lot of turmoil uh, for, a, for a while there, Josh. They were seeming to uh, to rally around it, but after that last loss, uh, maybe things kind of really went off the uh, off the railroad tracks, right? But regardless, you guys looking at the total here, not necessarily looking for the Nets to cover here. So uh, how are you looking at this total, Josh? Yeah, I'm I'm with Ski. I'm, I like the under as well. I have it you know, now five points under market. 217 is where I make fair price. Um, much the same as, as what Ski was saying as well. You look at the pace of both these teams, it's bottom five in the league right now. Uh, it's not a lot of transition play. It's a lot of half-court sets. And if that's the case, I mean, Brooklyn, they're up to fifth now in opponent effective field goal percentage in the season. So they're doing a fantastic job of making life extremely uncomfortable for teams in the half-court, not letting them get good, high-quality looks at the basket, um, at the rim, or on the three-point line either, which is going to be... Hugely important against this Portland team, who's third in the league, I believe, in three-point shooting percentage. So they do a great job closing out to shooters, contesting the shots out there. That's going to be really important in this matchup for them, especially against that backcourt duo. And, you know, for Portland, their defense, we know they've been sort of top half of the league basically since day one and opening tips. So I expect that to continue as well. Portland third in the league in mid-range defense as well. And that is going to be extremely important against a Brooklyn team who is top five both in mid-range frequency and mid-range efficiency, which isn't surprising when you've got Kevin Durant there either. So they do a great job scrambling in and around uh, sort of inside the three-point line. I expect that, again, to be extremely important there. So both defenses, I think, have really good matchups uh, against the opposing offenses. I think that'll come to the fore here. And like you said, I think I would lean towards Jacques Vaughn being able to sort of get his troops to rally around on the back of what was an absolute hiding in Sacramento. So, yeah, I, I do think they're going to be engaged to finish this this West Coast road trip. I don't think they tail off. I don't think it spins out any worse than what it was last time out. And, you know, if we get that renewed energy and focus here, then this becomes a bit of a rock fight. And I think that this number is going to be way too high as a result. Yeah, that's that was crazy right there, man. They must have been playing 15, uh, 20 minute quarters or something. They game. I don't understand how do you give up one hundred and fifty three points. Uh, in my opinion, so it's maybe they can't. I understand that they were supposed to have Kyrie back that day. Maybe it affect them, but there's a lot going on with this team right now. But we knew did show that they could play some defense before their last game. Me personally, the way I look at it, if a team gives up one hundred and fifty three, uh, I could only look towards the under the next game. You got to have some type of professionalism or pride, right, for yourself. So um, I can only look at the under here. I might ride with my guy. I'm on this, so no official play for me, but I like how they broke it down. This definitely should be an under spot, especially where the Blazers play as well. Last game of a little West Coast road trip for the Nets. I definitely see the under 222 hidden in this one for both of my guys. I will definitely ride with you guys personally on this one, guys. 